Hey guys, Ross here and welcome to the start of Undawn content on this channel. Now guys, Undawn is launching globally very, very soon. And if you're new to the game or even the genre itself, you're going to be confused and lost like this woman is on the beach right now in the background. Thankfully though, I'm going to be making this guide in advance to the global launch date to give you the best possible head start as you enter the game for the first time. So be sure to subscribe the channel down below to not miss any future guides tips or live streams or even gameplay who knows but anyway guys please like the video if you do enjoy it and we're gonna get straight into everything you need to do as an undawn beginner let's go so then guys when you first install the game you're gonna come to obviously the login screen and this is a very important step unless of course you're playing by yourself if you're playing by yourself just skip this step entirely however if you're going to be playing with friends or family or clan members from other games etc you want to make sure that you all go on the same server now you'll get a server list on login make sure you click the one that's best for you but also click the one that everybody you know is going on because if you click the wrong one you can't play it together very important there's no cross server player as such i think there is in pvp but other than that you need to be on the exact same server as each other to actually group up or join camps together go on quests together etc so make sure very important now guys, upon making your account on whatever server, you're going to be hit with a character creator. Now you're only able to either be male or female, which you'll get to choose from on this screen with many presets. Now, the game itself has got a very extensive character creation customizer, so you can go absolutely nuts. So make sure you do spend some time making your character very, very unique. You don't want to just use one of the presets and then look like every single other person who picked that specific preset. You want to really go into it and make something very, very unique. Just bear in mind though, all the outfits you do try on during the character creation aren't what you start with. You have to actually achieve these in game or buy them or whatever, stuff like that. Now guys, you may remember waking up on the beach at the start of this video, like I'm saying again right now. This is the start of the extensive tutorial guide that the game will literally force upon you at the very start of the game. Now it's important to pay complete attention to everything it tells you in this tutorial. Now you'll go from waking up on the beach to <coughs> finding your first weapon, uh, learn about food and uh, condition and cleaning yourself, taking a bath, etc. Lots of things that are important in the long run of the game. And if you're not sure how to do it, you're going to struggle. So make sure you do pay attention to everything said in the tutorial. You also get a guidebook you can follow with certain quests. So it'll teach you how to summon your bike or even get one in the first place and like build a house where the trailers are, etc. All these things you should take a mental note of so that further down the line when you're thinking, where can I get this from? You'll know because it was in the tutorial. Very, very useful to actually listen to everything that's there. Uh, taught to you during this stage of the game. So guys, during the tutorial, the game will actually give you your first hatchet and your first uh, mining pick, so don't worry about getting them. However, any, literally nearly any tree in the wilderness, you can cut down for wood as many, as well as other wood-based supplies. And on the map, you can see little sort of stone icons, which will show you where the stone deposits are to get stone as well. Now, if you need food, you can search for the fruit on the map, which will give you berries and mushrooms etc or you can look for the meat which gives you animals which you can get meat from to do cooking with you also have the leaf icon which is like sort of fiber and stuff like that grassy sort of things uh, hemp whatever whatever you want to call it from different games and stuff like that you've also got fish but that's a that's a different video entirely Right guys, aside from running around the world or using your motorbike or car, whatever else you get in the future, you've got these signposts or road signs that are scattered throughout the map. Now these things are fast travel points. <coughs> you also have a little sort of signpost outside of each little dungeon you're seeing on the map now. Then blue things are like sort of solo dungeons or squad dungeons, etc. These are also fast travel points. So you can fast travel between any of these points assuming you have them unlocked if you don't have them unlocked you have to travel to them and activate them so you can see them on the main map if you open up the big global map you can mark them you can go to them you can unlock them and then you can use them as a fast travel point to get around the world faster it's very 
very important when you need to get back to the main hub or you need to get to a certain quest area that's quite far away if you've got a fast travel point nearby you can just use it to get there you can also use this to just travel back to your homestead at any point when you're near one so guys, as you progress through the game and the main campaign mission, you will be brought to areas like this, which are solo dungeons. You also get squad dungeons that you can do with friends. Now these are marked on the map by a blue radioactive triangle sign sort of thing, which you can unlock as a fast travel point that I recently mentioned. Now these scale from easy to medium to hard as you gradually level up. And you can do these for challenges, you get uh, quests to do them, you get missions to do them, etc. And they give you rewards, good source of sort of experience, etc. for leveling up. But I'd like I say it gradually get harder. This one was during the tutorial, so it's still quite easy at this point in the game. But it's a nice introduction to that sort of thing. Now, like I say, these will get gradually harder as you level up. But there's also dungeons, like actual raids that you can do as a squad as well, which you can't solo, which are at certain places. But you can queue for these within the menu, the daily menu, etc. Just to get like better gear and a chunk of experience from completing them right guys the main hub of this game is called raven's shelter you're seeing me fast travel to it right now you can use obviously any of these uh signposts to fast travel to it now raven's shelter contains all the npcs you might want to talk to for quests or daily quests and it contains all of the vendors that you can get trade goods from for instance you need certain things like glue or super glue etc you'll find that on the traders in this area you can't find it out in the world or at your house or on traders at random places this is the place you have to go to to actually get those different things so bear in mind keep an eye out where it is you can walk there you can drive your bike there or you can just teleport there but if you ever need anything to build in your house which i'm going to come to next that's where you need to go also in raven shelter guys you can talk to this guy right here this old man and this guy will let you join or create a camp now i'll be creating a camp when the game launches of course but if you do want to join one it's a different screen to this you just search the name or search whatever you want and click request to join now if you're going to create one you need to get sort of a permission slip sort of thing off this guy for a certain cost you can see on the screen here for a certain amount of time you put in the camp description the camp name etc and then you need to get up to i think it's three or four people to sign this charter before you can actually create the camp itself once it's created it's permanent but if you don't get enough people to sign it in the time limit that you are making the camp in say 12 hours 24 or 48 it will cancel can't 100 percent say if it refunds you not that it really matters as such because it's not that much money but it is important if you're going to make a camp to make sure you've got people lined up before you do this because trying to get people to actually sign the petition once it's there is very, very hard. So if you're going to make a camp, make sure you've got members in advance before you do it so you've got more chance of creating it straight away. Right guys, lastly, you'll be given a homestead, as you're seeing right now. It's got a free treehouse in with a bed and a cooking station and stuff. However, you will get all these things gradually as you make them. Now, you make new guns here, you make new armor here, etc. like that. And you can also build your house to your heart's desire. Obviously, you'll have to go out into the world, farm wood, farm materials, etc. So that you can actually make your house as much as you want. You can also put cosmetics in and stuff like that. But... It's worth just fiddling with it, getting it the way you want it, because eventually when people raid it, it might be uh, quite easy to raid or quite hard to raid, we don't know. But this is like the temporary house you get before you join a camp. When you do actually join a camp, it's completely different. You'll be in an estate with other players near you, and you'll not have the tree house anymore. So just bear that in mind before you actually commit to moving to a new camp, that you'll lose the tree house, the nice tree house you've got at the top there. So, you know it's something to think about now eventually guys you're going to have a full backpack now what you want to do in this case is build wardrobes and drawers and stuff like that to put inside your house once you put these in these are your storage boxes you don't get chests or crates or anything like that these are what you use to store your extra wood or your trade materials and stuff obviously i'm doing it quick here because it was the early access and i wasn't really bothered about um what it looked like but 
the more you have, the more storage space you've got. So make sure you make plenty to store all the goods you get. You can also click the quick storage in the bottom right, which will just literally fling everything in your backpack that's already stacked inside your warehouse or your cupboards and stuff into the respective areas. However, if the sack is full, it won't transfer, so you will have to double click or drag them over yourself. So just bear that in mind, you do need to make more and more of this the more stuff you've got. So guys, to conclude, Undawn is launching on the 15th of June for Global and the 29th of June for Southeast Asia. Now, I think it's on Android and iOS respectively. So if you're not pre-registered for the game, go ahead and click the link down below in the description so you can benefit from the pre-registration rewards that will come with well, pre-registering. So if you haven't done that, like I say, go down below and click the link. You can also find the official Discord also linked down below in the description, as well as my own Discord if you do want to jump on that one. Anyway, guys, hope you have enjoyed the video. Hope you do find it helpful as you're starting out in Undawn. Please do leave a like down below if you have enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already at this point, subscribe to the channel. Please make sure you do to not miss any future content on Undawn. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.